Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is Jonathan Reporters for the 25th. And, well, nothing like a little panic to get people excited. And we knew that we were in, well, we could see them selling at the peaks just a little bit at a time so as not to cause any trauma. Then we broke above below this yellow line for our ABM, which we knew at that point was the beginning of everything. And we had already moved to a negative shakeout at that particular point where we were at the highs, which is why it marked it so beautifully. And then the cascade starts. So, of course, we've dipped into the red line now. All of this is just a panic, of course. Uh, even last night, um, the Santa Maria Novella, which is the main train station here in Florence, um, had a suspected case come through, so there is complete freak out. Um, all of the supermarkets have been completely obliterated, so this is the thing, it's the panic. It's not the illness, because we're talking a country of 60 million people and uh, you know a couple hundred cases, and pretty much everything is shutting down, and the economic impact of that, while great for the grocery stores for a day or two, um, is going to have its long-term impact in the supply disruptions and the whole breakdown of the order of everything and, and people's behaviors. Um, we're going to see it in travel, all sorts of other entertainment. Um, and that's the impact. This is not really the illness because, again, even if it is uh, showing up at the well, massive death rate of 4%, uh, it's still 96 out of every 100 people are fine. But Panic always does it, and I said that when this started, we would have a massive exit and not everybody would be able to get out, and that's exactly how that turned out. Now we're getting a nice rebound, and we should expect a bunch of those. Uh, even within major downturns, even in 2008, you had significant up moves, so I'm never afraid to flip around and uh, take the short gains, turn around and go along for them, because sometimes you get some pretty big drawbacks to the upside, um, because at the end of the day, um, the Fed is going to continue to throw just massive amounts of money uh, and has and potentially not even limited itself to actually buying um, securities through underhanded means. But they'll do whatever it takes to keep things from falling apart because that's the real issue is the social order uh, breaking down. And I think that's fundamentally the most important aspect in reading this. Uh, we're talking about people and emotions and... Uh, it always impacts uh, what they do with their money. But there's certainly no way to get yield elsewhere other than in the market, so that's still going to have a factor. Um, but we did come back um, for the NASDAQ here, filled in all the way back. Um, pretty darn close. We might even see it coming back just a little bit further. It didn't have to because it still was never a dip below the red line, but we have a bunch more positive extremes on the NASDAQ than we do on the um, S&P. And not surprisingly, so uh, euro, you know, still holding up. Uh, this, you know, the central banks love them. They really got to do this. We're they're in crisis management right now. Um, not a shock that oil is going to have tougher because they see the longer term implications. And even if you have governments buying up uh, the current supply, they can only get so much of it. And um, you've got an issue with actually moving it around because a lot of the disruptions already have got so many tankers used up in that there's just going to be a lot of excess storage and facilities are going to have to shut down otherwise they're going to have anywhere to put it. And that caused even with the ramp up of gold it's still making new highs. Um, it's just going to be a bouncy ride in between because it's just an uncertainty for people and then when the market has uh, big down days a lot of times people uh, use it to cover for liquidities. Look at this, it's ridiculous, the 5K chart. Well, I mean, um, we started with the breakdown from before and that clearly wasn't going to change and we didn't get any uh, reset until uh, after the small little bounce right here. Uh, we had the steel dip back below, so it kind of reset itself. That'll let us have the next decline where we spiked above the 13.5 and then finally we had a shakeout above the negative 13. Um, you could have taken that one, not that this was a little bit aggressive, but it was absolutely correct um, because that was a nice rally to the upside. Go ahead and increase the size because there was just so much volume. I'm going to tiny this. Uh, I had to shrink that to get it to even show up on the charts. That was amazing. It all went pretty much as expected within that because when you get too many people going one side, 
you got to go the other direction, which is why we had so many ups and downs and it just got to the point where it's not even worth within a broader downtrend if you're just going to stay with the overall short then you know when to convert it and it's i'm looking for these spikes above the 13.5s knowing i'm going to get the potential for a stronger bounce back um, and that's usually when they take place right here and that led to the nice bounce back rally it lasted a pretty good portion of it and then right before the close of it already being down so much, usually you get then, you know, your profit taking off of that uh, bounce, and that's exactly what happened there. And uh, came back and filled the dip below the red line right here at the 0% in futures. And now you have the massive rally because the sky is not falling and nothing has broken. But filling in every one of those uh, algo levels very nicely. And supporting right off of them. I mean, literally right here in the after hours. Hit it, came back, break to it, dipped slightly below with the overflow of the cell, and then boom, right back to the top. So, um, I love high volatility days. I think that's the opportunity to really strike. We knew this was just about to come, and it showed up a little bit earlier in some cases, um, but the broader dysfunction this is going to create worldwide disproportionately to what the illness is. Um, it's going to have some significant impacts and I know they just started to report cases in North America and I think that um, the same behaviors that you see here uh, are likely to transmit to the U.S. Uh, the question is will they be able to slow it? Uh, people talk about containment or contain it. You just want to slow it down just to not overwhelm things but it's the panic that people uh, freaking out uh, doing crazy things is really more of a concern than anything else. But for now, we're just going to keep following the market moves because this is going to be an opportunity to make uh, yearly gains within just a short window of time as the volatility increases. So we want to be able to take advantage of that as we uh, uh, get closer to the end of the month. We have extra day of trading in that for February. <laughs> Not that that helps anything, but uh, as always, I will put up any relevant charts. Uh, actually, it was just too fast uh, to really do much of anything. And this was all pretty clean. I mean, these are just simple DLC spreads as marked with our BKs. Uh, beautiful runs. As always, trade well. We'll talk again later.